Hello! Yes, welcome back everybody to Oh Yeah, Oh Yeah, the Entourage Podcast. I am your host, J.R. Hickey, coming to you from San Francisco, California. Super special week here on the Entourage Podcast. The 15-year anniversary of the Entourage Pilot is happening this Thursday, July 18th. The pilot premiered back in 2004. We have a whole week's worth of audio and written content planned for you guys. To kick it off, I had my very good friend Kyle Banduo on. Kyle's the host of Big Screen Sports Pod. It's a sports movie podcast where he breaks down the authenticity of the sports in our favorite sports movies. He was my guest in season one for the script in the Sherpa. He and I go way back. We used to be writers of post-grad problems together. He came on to discuss the movie career of one Vincent Chase. So what we did was we went through Vinny's career movie by movie, broke it down, talked about its real-life comparison, talked about if we would see it in person, see it on an airplane, watch it on Netflix, etc. Real fun conversation. Kyle literally lives for this shit, so he was the perfect guest. Later this week, on Wednesday, we are dropping an episode with David Cavucci. David Cavucci is the political editor for The Daily Dot. He has been on two episodes of Oh Yeah, Oh Yeah. He had the talk show, I believe, in season one. And then just recently, he was on for Blue Balls Lagoon. He came on to do an entire recap episode of season two with me. I did this at the end of season one, and I'm going to continue to do it at the end of each season, where we're just going to talk about our favorite moments, cameos, lines, etc. from the season as a whole to prepare you for season three, which will come out next Monday. We are back next Monday with Aquamom. Super excited for that. There may be another episode of Oh Yeah, Oh Yeah dropping this week. We're going to see. I'm trying to see if schedules will line up, but no promises yet. Check out brobible.com. I'm going to have a couple pieces up on that website in honor of the 15-year anniversary. Don't forget to follow the podcast on Instagram and Twitter at Oh Yeah Pod and follow me at JR Will Do It. Thank you guys so much for listening. Enjoy this very special episode of Oh Yeah, Oh Yeah, and I will talk to you on Wednesday. I am so excited to welcome back to the podcast a good friend of mine. You know him from season one's episode, The Script and the Sherpa. He is the host of the sports movie podcast, Big Screen Sports. Good friend of mine, dialing in from San Antonio, Texas, Tyle Banduho. Whoa, Jesus, I just fucked up your name. <laughs> Kyle Banduho, how are we doing today, bud? I'm doing great, man. I am so excited to be back on Oh Yeah, Oh Yeah. It's been too long. What the hell took you so long? Don't do that. Don't be one of those people. Listen, everyone, I'm trying my best here, and anyone who's like, why haven't I been on the podcast yet? There's a reason why you haven't been on the podcast yet. But Kyle, there's a reason you're on this podcast, and that's because you know movies. I do. I do. It's my thing. And we have a very special 15-year Entourage anniversary episode this Monday. We are not talking about an episode from season two or three. We are not breaking it down moment by moment, quote by quote. Instead, we are talking about the career and movie filmography of one Vincent Chase. The man. Kyle, before we dive in, we are going to go movie by movie, moment by moment, through Vince's career, we're going to discuss whether or not we'd actually go see this movie if it was real, what it may have been inspired from, whether or not Vince was the right choice, and if we have time at the end, we're going to discuss some films that Vince actually passed on throughout the eight seasons of the show Entourage. But before we do all that, can you tell everyone about the revamp of your sports podcast, Big Screen Sports? Yeah, uh, Big Screen Sports, formerly Trouble with the Script. Uh, change it to Big Screen Sports because Trouble with the Script really didn't make sense unless you knew what I was talking about. Uh, but we go through the authenticity of sports movies. Um, you know, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, all those things. Check out episode one. It was titled Trouble with the Script then. Uh, JR came on. We talked about Remember the Titans. If you're listening uh, today, I think it's going to be Monday, June 15th. On Thursday of this week, we have an episode with, of doing uh, Cool Runnings, the the classic, the one and only bobsled movie. But yeah, we, we break down the, the authenticity, the realism. We kind of celebrate the good things about the movie, you know, talk a little shit about the bad things about the movie, and, you know, we, we have a good time. But yeah, check out uh, me and JR's episode on Remember the Titans way back when, and check out Cool Runnings this week. Cool Runnings, one of those movies that has probably a lot of inaccuracies. <laughs> yeah, Let's just yeah, be the, uh, the IMDb trivia on that movie on that movie is really interesting. Well, I'm glad you could join me to talk about Vinny Chase's career. Are you excited? Are you excited to talk about the film actor known as 
Vinny. I'm I'm super excited because I love doing this. I love kind of breaking down what I and it's something like we kind of do on the podcast. Talk about you know actors who have been in a lot of sports movies and stuff. You know we talk talk a lot of Kevin Costner, but I'm really excited to kind of talk about like Vince's evolution and and just kind of spitball and what kind of actor Vince might have been. Like where what would we be thinking of Vince when our narrative with him ends? And uh, I can't when the Entourage movie come out like twenty. 2014. 2014. Jesus. <laughs> Let's do it then. Let's do so it. So before we dive in, Entourage executive producer Mark Wahlberg, you might have heard of him. He named the character Vincent Chase after the legendary Hollywood acting teacher with whom Wahlberg became friends while working on their 1997 Bill Paxton film Traveler. Yeah, and he clearly didn't base him on, him on himself because his career has gone a lot better than Vinny Chase's did. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Let's dive in to Vince's career. So, he started his career appearing in commercials for Mentos. Ari, I started this business peddling Mentos. I don't want to go back. Vinny. Super underrated candy. A tube of Mentos can go a long way. Are you a are you a fruit Mentos guy? I am a fruit Mentos guy. So am I. <laughs> I love fruit Mentos. They're delicious. <laughs> I might go to the gas station when we finish recording this. <laughs> Why don't we just talk about Mentos in that's forty five minutes and Let's see how my you know what this do. weekend actually I think I'm gonna buy a soda and uh, and grab some Mentos and be like the cool dad and show my kid what happens when you drop Mentos into a Coke. That's actually that's a good idea. I bet he's never seen that before. He definitely hasn't. This is now Mento. <laughs> this is now Mentos hour. <laughs> Uh, Vince's first TV role, Kyle. Do you remember what that was? It was on JAG, I believe. Let's take a moment to celebrate how far we've come, all right? First check I ever got for you, $668 for what? Uh, Guest star on JAG. Guest star on JAG, and I did not take commission for that. No, you did not. This time, I will. My parents watched JAG. It was a death spot on JAG. Yes, my grandparents watched JAG. (laughs) It lines up perfectly. (laughs) Ari says to Vince that he didn't take commission on the Jad check. How, how, how noble of Ari. But after handing Vinny his check for two million little fishies, as he says, he will be taking commission on that check. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I mean, Ari, I'm sure Ari was living in a seven-figure house when he didn't take commission on that Jag check. <laughs> All right, we're getting a little meta here. We'll get to the real movies in a second, but the last weird kind of, it's referenced... Is And it's very pertinent to where Oh Yeah, Oh Yeah as a podcast is right now because we're currently just finished season two. We are starting up season three next Monday um, with Aquaman, but at the end of season two, it's referenced quite a bit, and that is his role in A Walk to Remember. Starring Shane West and Mandy Moore, a classic. Yeah, what role was Vince in that? Like, They don't say what role he was, and he obviously wasn't in the movie, but what, what could he have been? Like, a friend? He had, he would have been in a Shane West squad because I think in the beginning of the movie he gets in trouble for doing something like kind of douchey. He would have yeah. been one of those friends in his squad who's telling him like, "Hey, do do whatever douchey thing." I don't know. I I, I didn't see a walk to remember, and I do know the gist of it. But he would he would be one of Shane West's pals who then doesn't understand why he's getting with Mandy Moore. You didn't watch a walk to remember to prepare for this podcast, Kyle? I did not. No, <laughs> and I, I did not see it when it came out. Anyone has any clue as to who Vince would be on a watch to remember, just send me a DM or, or tweet me at oh yeah pod, please. So before we get into Vinny's career and we walk through his filmography, we're going to have a couple categories. It's not going to be as rigid or regimented as a normal oh yeah, oh yeah episode, but after every movie we're going to discuss, was Vinny a good fit or a bad pick? Also, we're going to discuss whether or not we would see the movie opening night, whether we'd wait to stream it on Netflix, whether we'd watch it on a plane or if we'd stip it all together. And then we're going to discuss what movie that's currently in modern pop culture that this movie is closest to. So obviously there are some pretty distinct parallels between Aquaman, but there are other movies that Vinny's done that might be a little bit harder. So we'll do that after every movie. Sound good, Kyle? I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Let's do this. Let's do it. So let's start with, let's start with Head On in 2004. Episode 1. Of Entourage. The um, the summary for Head On is like a crime thriller mystery, but it <laughs> yeah. doesn't say anything about it. I know. Yeah. I, I, it's produced by 20th Century Fox. Jesta Alba is like alongside him. She's the like female lead. Vinny was paid $2 million for his role in Head On. And this is the hilarious stat. 
The movie grossed $18 million during its opening weekend, and that was considered like a breakout for Vince. Yeah, it's just funny that they don't tell you any... They're just like, they expect you to believe, hey, this this movie was good, people wanted to see it, it was a fun movie, but they don't tell you anything about it, and the title doesn't tell you anything about it. So based upon that information... <laughs> Was Vinny a good fit or a bad pick for this movie? I feel like he was a good fit just because, like, it's one of those movies that, that fucking anyone could be in. It's like they hit the hit the dice in the game Trouble, and whatever it comes up, it's like, oh, yeah, cast that guy. Like, it, this could have been a movie, like, head on. Yep, could have exactly. been any, any of, young yeah, 24 year old. Like, that's, that's all it needed to be, was just some young, good looking dude. I totally agree with you. I'd say good fit for me as well i don't know who would be a bad pit for this i don't know how he could have like fucked this one up and i mean apparently according to the reviews all he had to do was like stand around and look pretty so it's probably what he did i mean that's like yeah that's like any action movie in the you know in the 2000s with just some young dumb 20 year old it makes perfect sense it lines up perfectly so in 2019 would kyle banduho go see this opening night stream it watch it on a plane or skip it I'm waiting for this to come on on TNT. <laughs> when it comes on on TNT, like I'll throw it on. You won't even watch it on an airplane if it's if it's for free in front of you. You won't even watch it on an airplane. <laughs> no, but I'll probably invest in it on cable. Like it'll come on cable and it'll have a three and a half hour runtime with commercials. And I'm like, yeah, fuck. I guess I'm all in. I guess I'm gonna <laughs> see what Head On was all about. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm going to wait to watch mine on a plane. Uh, I take a lot of plane rides, and uh, that's one of those ones that might... Oh, this will be good for some dumb laughs, and like I, I won't really pay attention, you know? Order a drink, kick back, mm-hmm. and watch a young you Vincent Chase and Justin Alba. Totally. Yeah, yeah, it, it makes sense as a good plane movie. The all-important question, though, is what current movie is this closest to we have no idea what this movie is about <laughs> yeah so as far as current movie i didn't do current movie just what it i had a comp of what it kind of remind me remind that's exactly me what i mean yeah and it's um so i went with another jessica album movie from that kind of that time period did you ever see into the blue no that's with, with paul, paul walker, walker and scott con yeah oh man the blue kind of goes like into the blue is sneaky like kind of rewatchable it's got some like it, it i mean like Jessica Alba was at her peak. She was super hot. Paul Walker, potentially the hottest dude who ever lived. Like, it had its moments. Like, it was really weird. One of the main crew dies of a shark attack, but at the end of the movie, everyone's fine, completely forgets about it. Spoiler alert, it was 15 years ago. But, like, that's what this kind of movie kind of is. If End of the Blue comes on TNT and I turn it on and it's not on commercial, I'm going to, like, I'll, I'll probably stick it out for at least a couple commercials. So that's what Head On is to me. It's End of the Blue. You know, it's interesting because I had for the comp, as we're calling it, or the like the comparable movie, I had The Fast and the Furious. Not as much for what it is now, which is like this crazy action franchise that like every movie makes like a billion dollars. But at the time when The Fast and the Furious came out, and I think that was 2001 uh, by Universal Pictures, like there was this new young hot actor, Paul Walker. He just kind of had true. to stand around and look good and like act alongside like better actors and and then and then the the franchise remained stagnant for like five six years. Nothing happened with the Fast and the Furious. They had Too Fast, Too Furious, which was a, was a disaster. But like Loki kind of goes. So too. As, as a standalone movie, I think head on. I'll watch Too Fast, Too Furious when it comes on. <laughs> you spend a lot of time at home with your kid, don't you? <laughs> I do. Yeah, I have a lot of free time. <laughs> So yeah, that's my vote. You, so yours is Into the Blue, mine is uh, Fast and the Furious. It's good to know that we're thinking along the same lines as like uh, a young Vinny Chase is is similar to a young Paul Walker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, that's good. Yeah, we're right in loop with that. That's good news. So let's talk about Vinny's next movie, the very infamous Queens Boulevard. Potentially like Vinny's best movie as far as how it's regarded on the show. Yeah, he chooses it over Matterhorn. It's a black and white independent feature. He stars alongside Ethan Suppley, Zoe Deschanel, and Robert Duvall. You only know that because they show for a split second the movie poster in the Sundance Kids episode. It's about a man running from the law in New York City. It becomes a massive hit at Sundance, and he would lead to his biggest role of his career, which is obviously Aquaman. Wasn't it like pushing four hours, too? Yeah, it was pushing four hours. Oh, and uh, if anybody got to use the can... The movie's running almost four hours, so we'll do it now. Thank you. Thank you. 
made up a four hour movie. This is my fucking deer hunter wick. Later on in the sh- run of the show, director Billy Walsh and Vinny team up and blot it from being uh, re-released in color, and it goes straight to DVD. I want to see Queens Boulevard. Yeah, remember those days when stuff went straight to DVD? Yeah, and and again, it, Queens Boulevard isn't something you would go to the first day in theaters because it's not playing in theaters near you. Yep. Like it went. It was at that. Well, maybe you. You live in San Francisco. It's probably <laughs> like that. Like quaint indie theater that shows one picture a week and. That's what it is, but uh, yeah, this one is like when it when it hit hits Netflix, like everyone's gonna stream it. It's gonna be a this thing. is a stream it one hundred percent. I completely agree with you. Was uh was Vinny a good fit or a bad pick here? I mean, it seems like he was a good fit. And the one scene the show they show us the I am Queens Boulevard scene, like I buy it. <laughs> it's in black I buy and it white. Too. Everything I mean... looks good in black and white. Whatever. Stick it in the mailbox once I'm gone. Let the cops chase after a dead man. But he was your brother. Half brother. Take care of yourself. Hey, you ever coming back? You kidding? I am Queens Boulevard. And they kept Vinny's acting at a bare minimum in the first two seasons. You see the I am Queens Boulevard scene, and then you see him do the uh, swan dive into the ocean as Aquaman, and you're like, this guy can act. And then you, you learn later on, maybe he can act. <laughs> yeah, they, they did it. They kept up the facade of Vincent Chase very well. You leave the Queens Boulevard section of the show being like okay like vince is you feel like vince is this young up-and-coming guy he's not just a pretty face he's got a lot of talent he he's gonna be like he reminds vince at this time so this is like an actor comp kind of reminds me of like what people thought colin farrell was was gonna be and ended up being but like way down the road because colin farrell was this dude he's like oh he's handsome he in cool stuff and but is he secretly super talented and then it was like, oh, wait, he's, I think he was like an alcoholic for a long time. And then now yes, he he's was. really good again. Well, and he's got that dark, brooding Irish thing going. I mean, mm-hmm. if, if anyone here hasn't seen In Bruges, In stop Bruges what you're so doing good. and watch In Bruges. It should be on Netflix. And it's like very similar, like a uh, hitman on the run who's like hiding out from the law after he fucked something up. And um, yeah, I, I, I'm honestly, that's just off the top of my head, but I would say In Bruges is the closest comp to uh, Queens Boulevard. What was yours? Uh, I've got Memento. Memento? Like black and white, super indie super indie feeling. Um, it's probably not the same kind of like script thing, but it is a guy who's, you know, it's a mystery in some, like, that's what I, I've got the feel of more like what Memento was. Because you remember like the first time you heard about Memento or someone told you about yep. Memento? Hey, man, it's this black and white indie. The director's really good, man. You got to go see it. Like, are you like, you got to see Memento. It was kind of like that. I feel like Queens Boulevard would have that kind of vibe, like people talking about it. Yeah. And like Guy Pierce is trying to solve who murdered his wife. Apparently, Vinny Chase is on the run because he did something. Maybe he's been wanted, framed for murder or something like that. So that, that's a great fit, dude. I, I think that's a good call and, and, and nice call on the black and white, too. Yeah, and if you haven't seen Memento, go see Memento. I hate to be one of those people, but, like, you got to see <laughs> Memento. Yeah, this is just going to be, like, two hipster dudes with podcasts talking about, you got to see this movie. <laughs> you got to see oh, man, this movie. This movie, oh, it's so good. Season two of Entourage just ended on Oh Yeah, Oh Yeah, the Entourage podcast. And at the end, in the series finale, I'm sorry, in the season finale, The Abyss, Vinny ultimately decides to continue on with his uh, role as Aquaman and becomes the biggest movie star in the world. So let's talk about Aquaman. Let's talk about the role. Ten years before Jason Momoa would play Aquaman, Vinny Chase did it. What'd you think of this? James Cameron directed it. It did 116 million on its opening weekend, biggest movie opening in the world at the time. Yeah, I mean, this would have been a you go see opening night. 100%. Um, and this kind of gives away I have two movie comps for this one. This kind of gives away one of my movie comps. But I when Avatar came out, I saw it at midnight on like a yep. Thursday in IMAX, and that's what I would have done with this movie. I mean, it was James Cameron. He's doing a superhero movie. The superhero genre at this point in 2006 is still really fresh. Yep. You've got the two Spider-Mans. I think maybe you have Batman Begins. And other than that, that's about it. Yeah, and Aquaman was such like an interesting... I mean, obviously it was kind of done for laughs. Like, could you imagine if James Cameron did an Aquaman movie back in 2006? But you know, fast forward now... 12 years later, 
would have made a lot Aquaman of sense. Aquaman starring Jason Momoa had a budget of $200 million and made $1.1 billion at the global box office. It fucking works. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But that's not my my comparison either. My comparison is the because of the time period, is a, it's a cross between Avatar and then the first Spider-Man. Because the yeah. first Spider-Man kind of launched Tobey Maguire from being that dude who was in the Cider House Rules and the weird yep. guy in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas to <laughs> you know a superstar who then it was revealed was a massive asshole playing high stakes poker games yep. versus this. This is what that did for Vince. Plus like avatar is the closest thing we have the most recent, like James Cameron thing with high tech 2000 special effects. And that's what this kind of would have been like. I mean, if yeah, the, I fully believe the show, it grossed 116 million on the first weekend. Absolutely. And it led its success led to a sequel, but unfortunately the sequel was rushed out. The script was written by Kevin Smith it was directed by Michael Bay, and Vinny did not return. Instead, he was replaced by Jake Gyllenhaal, which was a nice dig at rumors at the time that Gyllenhaal was going to replace Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man at one point in the early 2000s. Um, we don't find out how it did, but considering that Michael Bay directed it, and then you know he was really crazy about the CGI and the explosions at the time, I'm sure it made a good chunk of change. It was probably very similar to like the Transformers movies. Which, by the way... The first Transformers with Shia LaBeouf and Megan Fox is good. Is very good. It's really, it's a really good movie. All it's the a really fun action not. popcorn movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, that's another one. When that's on TNT, you know what? Yeah, I'll go a step further. When that's on HBO, I'll watch it. Wow. That's big. Because <laughs> that's not. I can't take commercial breaks with that. Kyle can't go get up and go get himself a drink from the kitchen <laughs> if it's on HBO. Exactly. All right. So we've talked about the high point of Vinny's career, and it's it's followed very. Very quickly, a year later in 2007, by a pretty low point, and that is, uh, that's with Medean. Behind the murder. Behind the greed. Behind the legend. Was the man. And be absolutely clear. I don't want him arrested, I want him dead. Vincent Chase. Medellin. The funny thing about this, like, is that this script, like these this Pablo the Pablo Escobar story had really floated around Hollywood for the, you know, the 15 years before they made this show. Like yep. since Escobar's death, and then we obviously saw, you know, a decade later, it get made to perfection with Narcos. First two seasons of Narcos, nominated for all sorts of uh, awards at the Emmys, like uh, fantastic comp, but a bad pick for Vinny Chase. Let's be honest. Bad pick. Well, just uh, Billy Walsh like went down the toilet in this movie. Like, you, yep. I mean, because on on paper it should work. Vince is coming off this these two massive successes in Queens Boulevard and Aquaman. Billy Walsh is this hot director. I mean, that's why everyone was bidding all that money for it in Cannes before they actually like saw the movie. But yeah, bad bad pick by Vince. They they could have done a lot of things differently with this one. They needed to show Vince packing on the pounds. Yeah, oh, I would have killed for like a quick montage. Well, Entourage didn't really do montages, but like one episode <laughs> where Vince is just like drinking milkshakes for every meal and just eating in and out every day. Like out of, I, I needed a Vince is like packing on the pounds episode and it's just killing drama watching Vince get out of shape. <laughs> Baby bro is not focusing on his body. <laughs> <laughs> Baby bro, you gotta be careful with those saturated fats. Just like the bad prosthetics, you know, I did like the actor Adrian Grenier has got some, you know, uh, uh, South American blood in him. So like, it seemed like it could have worked on the surface. I think also compounded with the fact that he's chasing this movie for literally three seasons of the show. The fact that it flops so badly is an interesting obstacle for Vinny Chase, but but almost you can almost see it coming. They spend all of season four building up to this massive you know, premiere, and the fact that it was a bomb didn't surprise me at all. It would have made it it would have made Vince's life way too good, honestly. Yeah. Because after that, after he'd have two massive successes plus a really hot indie, like his life is really good forever, pretty much. He he's gonna be able to get to do whatever he wants. Um, you know, there's there's really no there's very little turmoil for him. They had to make this a bomb on the show. What is your comp for this Medean? 
So uh, shout out to the guy we talked about a few minutes ago, Colin Farrell. My comp is a mix of Alexander and John Carter. <laughs> Do you remember? It? Oh, dude, John Carter. John Carter was like it was like Disney's biggest bomb ever. It was supposed to be what skyrocketed Taylor Kitsch, and that kind of has taken a taken a back road. Um, he's had to do like you know smaller stuff and TV stuff. Um, he was awesome in uh, the Branch Davidian thing on uh, Waco. He was awesome in Waco. Yeah, Waco was great. And then like Alexander was a biopic that was supposed to be Colin Farrell's you know ascension into he's going to be an Oscar winner. And then turns out he's struggling with alcoholism, and that movie was terrible. And, you know, it kind of derailed him for a long time. Like, he was an afterthought for a while. So it's kind of a combination of those two movies. They're both absolute bombs that were supposed to vault the star into new heights, and they just didn't do that. And that's what Medellin did with Vince. Was Alexander the one with Brad Pitt as um, Achilles? No, that was Troy, and Troy is fucking awesome. I am here for Troy. (laughs) If Troy was a sports movie, you bet I'd be breaking down Troy. Isn't there technically, like, is there a gladiator battle or something in Troy? Couldn't you break down that scene or something? I probably could, because, I mean, that movie, I mean, not to get it, not to get off topic, Brad Pitt, Eric Bana, Garrett Hedlund, that movie is sweet. Orlando Bloom. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's who it was. Yeah. I'm getting confused. Yeah, everyone go see Troy. You got to see Troy, man. If you haven't seen <laughs> Troy, <laughs> you got to see Troy. Everyone, I hope you're keeping notes at home. <laughs> what uh was Medean a good fit or a bad pick for Vinny Chase? I mean, clearly a bad pick. Clearly. Def- definitely a bad pick uh, a bad pick for him. When would you watch Medean if it ever made it to TV? Oh, see, that's the thing. They probably don't put it on TNT. It's too bad. Um, do you only watch TNT? <laughs> no, that's just like, that's my bar. Like, so like TNT and AMC, they'll put on like, like good movies. Yeah. Cause like, if I'm going to watch a movie on HBO, like I actually have to sit and commit to it for, you know, whatever. I can't get up. Sure. There's no commercials. So this one doesn't, I don't think I ever watch it. Honestly, I'm not sure I ever do. It's really long. It's really bad. You'd probably yeah. have to get it on a bootleg streaming service. I don't think I actually watch it. Neither would I. I'd skip it as well. It would be in like the one dollar DVD bin at like your Walmart. Like it wouldn't, it wouldn't even come across my radar to be honest with you. So Vinny has a couple, couple bad months after Medellin. I mean, if you call getting like slammed on a Mexican beach a bad month, but <laughs> you do you. I mean, career wise, we're talking about his career. We're not talking about his sex life right now. This is true. We'll talk a little bit more about the movies he like doesn't do or the movies he passes on, and, and, and Smoke Jumpers falls into that category. But in terms of a green-lit go movie, his next role is as Nick Kerouac in Martin Scorsese's Gatsby in 2009. You, you mean Nick Carraway? I know my oh, Gatsby. My Sorry, who's Kerouac? Oh, uh, we were talking Jack earlier Kerouac. about... Uh, yeah, we were talking earlier about Fear and Loathing. I just, uh, <laughs> this movie would probably be fire. Oh, this movie, I was telling my fiance like earlier that when we were, I was talking about what we were going to talk about, I was like, a Scorsese Gatsby, I would be all in. Did you see the, the Baz Luhrmann Gatsby movie? I did. I did see that with a girlfriend of mine back in Chicago, and it was fine. I'm a big Leo fan, as you know, so like I liked Leo in it, but uh, I, I, was, I wasn't like blown away by it. You? No, I mean it was really exciting. Like it was a good, uh, it was a good movie theater watch. I saw it in 3D. It was very. I mean, he did, um, he did Moulin Rouge as well. It was very in that style. Um, really enjoyable. Like Leo and and the aforementioned Tobey Maguire. The a uh, Martin Scorsese modern day Gatsby though, like that that makes my balls tingle. Hey, hello, hello, Vince. Hey, it's Marty Scorsese. Hi, hello. Yeah, listen. You got a minute to talk? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, indeed I do. Okay, well look, Gus was kind enough to send me some of the rushes in that picture you were in about the forest fires or whatever. And I saw them and I thought you were terrific. And I'd love to offer you a part in my new picture. Really? Yeah, it's a a reimagining of the great Gatsby. Modern day, uh, set in the Upper West Side of New York. And I think he'd be perfect for Nick Carraway. What do you think of that? Um, amazing. Great, if you'd like to come in and talk about the details. Okay. Okay. See you soon then. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Uh, 
I'm gonna be in a Scorsese movie. <laughs> Correction! You're gonna be the lead in a fucking Scorsese. That's quite the movie. Yeah, you'd hear you definitely hear like two Rolling Stone songs in it for some reason. There'd be a really like there'd be some sort of like showdown, you know? There'd be like a bunch of people pointing guns at each other at one point. <laughs> there'd be some like some some casual racism. Yep. Yep. Uh that that would exist. Uh but I mean it'd be it'd be awesome. That I mean that's an opening night for sure. Yeah, 100%. And the main character of Nick Carraway would, he'd be like addicted to heroin or something like that. That'd be, that'd be like one of his like personality traits. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Did you have a comp for this one besides the, the Baz Luhrmann Great Gatsby? No, I mean, that's, uh, I, I kind of just went, you know, by the book and that like the Great Gatsby, the Baz Luhrmann one in 2013 is the most accurate comp, but I want to hear what you have because yours have been so interesting so far. So with Scorsese, it's hard to like find something like what's his vibe because this isn't really a gangster movie, but you get yep. to thinking like what's a movie about a guy who's lives in excess, throws lots of parties, gets kind of wild. This is like, this would have been the predecessor to Wolf of Wall Street. Oh I my think. God. Crash, you're really good at this. <laughs> I live for this shit. We talked we talked off air. I have a lot of free time. So. Dude, that's perfect. But can you imagine a Gatsby movie but with like the vibe of Wolf of Wall Street? How amazing would that be? Cuz honestly, like you know, it's it's the roaring 20s, they're all partying, but it was debaucherous back then. Like and Vinny in the middle of it getting like ridden by some like half-naked girl in one of those like Big head pieces, one of those hair pieces that like they wore back in the twenties, like wild. Yeah, did they? They never said who played. Uh, who played? Actually, played Gatsby? Did they? No, they didn't. Um, I mean, the movie opened at number one in the box office. It grossed thirty seven million in its opening weekend, which is like seems light. Literally nothing now. Yeah, it seems ten very years light. later, super light. Yeah, and it, it announced his bid, his return to the bid screen essentially after after. Toiling away at smoke jumpers, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, yeah, that's a good pick. That's a good fit for Vinny Chase, for sure. Yeah, definitely a good pick. I mean, if you're going to get... I mean, the fact that Martin Scorsese is calling him two years after the Medellin flop is just... Like, okay. Are you seeing the Scorsese Helm Datsby opening night? Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm there. I'm probably there at midnight. Same. Sp We're sitting next to each other. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I'm all in on that. I'm probably seeing it <laughs> twice in theaters. <laughs> yeah, me too. Let's keep it moving. Um, it's interesting because as the show progresses, Vinny's movies become like less and less important. Like now that he's back on top, and we're focused, we're focused much more on like the turtle plots, the drama, trying to get a show off the ground plots, the E and all the Sloan nonsense. Like, so the, the last two or three movies he does, you don't see any clips from it. You don't really like did a feel for like who else is in it or how it did. So we really just kind of have, like, top-level notes here. So the next movie he did that was a greenlit movie that he starred in was the Enzo Ferrari movie called Ferrari in 2010. The only thing you really get out of this movie from the show is that Vince learns how to drive for it. Yeah. But other than that, I think it's, like, after the Gatsby movie, the show is like, okay, well, Vince is no longer this struggling up-and-coming actor. Like, he's there. He's going to have a long career. He's good. Yep. So that I think that's why they made these things such, you know, background plots, really. It was with Frank Darabont, which is cool. He directed Shawshank Redemption, like the classic biopic story. It's a race car driver turned manufacturer, Enzo Ferrari. It was filmed in Italy. It was delayed at one point for three months, so Vince has a bunch of time on his hand. And uh, yeah, that's like that's all there really is to it. I, I'm I'm seeing this movie though. I'm seeing this movie. Yeah, I mean, this movie sounds cool. It sounds like something that would get made right now. Uh, there was a recent there was a recent trailer with uh, Christian Bale and f someone else. Matt Damon, it's Ford Matt Damon, v Ferrari. Yeah, the, yeah, that one. Yeah, so that that's what that this kind of gave me the vibes of that. But it's also since it's a biopic, I feel like it's like. Uh, did you see Rush? I was. With, I know that that was your comp because because Rush is the most modern equivalent of what this movie is. Rush is awesome, and again, if you haven't seen Rush, man, you should see Rush. <laughs> but it's also kind of like if Rush met the Aviator. Yeah, I think. Because Rush isn't as much of it, it's kind of a biopic of those two guys, but it's it's also like a you know an action movie. Like Rush is sweet. The Aviator more focuses on one guy and his intricacies, and obviously I don't think Enzo Ferrari was as went as fucking nuts as Howard Hughes does, did. Yeah. But it's kind of probably in like that that kind of regard, and it was probably that kind of size movie. It was probably a big movie. Do you buy Vince as an Italian mechanic turned race car driver? Not really. He's Neither like do I. he's not. I don't. 
there's not a lot I buy. I honestly, I think I buy Vince's Nick Carraway and Gatsby the most because he doesn't yep. have to do a lot. He just has to kind of be like a, a little timid and kind of be like likable, but not like he doesn't have to carry the movie with his chutzpah because that's what the guy who's playing Gatsby does. Like that's what Leo did in, in Gatsby. Yep. That's probably what I buy him at the most. I don't buy him as Enzo Ferrari. I, I think I buy his role in, in Queens Boulevard head on and that's be the most and these next few i'm a little bit like huh okay like i could buy it but i don't think i was it would be the perfect fit for him yeah i mean the looks wise he's also at this point in his career where like he doesn't have to be the perfect fit exactly they're just gonna put him in something it's like uh i don't want to compare him like Clooney, but it's someone like that where it's just like you know we got this name we got this good script we'll make it work Exactly. You'll have to suspend your disbelief a little bit, and you're still going to fucking see it because it's this script and this guy. So Exactly. Moving on, in 2011, Vinny starred in an action movie directed by Nick Cassavetes called The Takeover. In the movie, he's asked to do his own stunts, which leads to him almost getting killed by a driving stunt gone wrong. And the near-death experience leads to a downward spiral for Vince (laughs) as he (laughs) develops a cocaine addiction, and then... (laughs) I can't wait for your podcast to get to this season. In 2021. <laughs> so this this action movie that involves like driving and, and big stunts for, for Cassavetes, did, did you look at what his IMDb, what, what this movie follows, the movie he had directed previously? No, I didn't. It follows My Sister's Keeper. What? <laughs> yeah, he's got a weird, I wish I had kept his IMDb up. He's got a weird mixed bag in there. So this like, this action movie that he's doing with Vince right after doing My Sister's Keeper is a little strange. There's not a lot of details surrounding it, as we know, but all we know is that, like, the director is kind of a maniac by putting his A-list movie star, like, in a fucking stunt car for no reason other than, like, peer pressure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I can't imagine it, like, doing well, especially because they don't really say anything about the movie afterwards. Vinny inexplicably starts taking pain pills, which gets him cooked on cocaine, which gets him beaten up by Eminem. That whole arc is mind-boggling um yeah this uh this movie might have been one of those ones that's out in theaters for like three weeks and then like you know what it's not very good and look at what the star is doing right now we're out on this we're gonna pull this from theaters let's kill it so would you would you have watched it would you watch it on netflix or like on a plane or 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 would you wait till it was on tnt kyle this is a netflix one for me i think i would watch this i think this is like a kind of one of those trash action movies that um it's kind of like my heroine like throw it throw it on throw it on give it to me (laughs) I have a comp for you, then I want to hear your comp. I actually have a good one, I think. I want to to hear your thoughts. Hit me with it. Uh, This movie came out just a year later, and it starred Mark Wahlberg. I don't know if if you've seen it, though. It's not one of the better-known Mark Wahlberg roles. Did you see Contraband? I did not see Contraband, but I know what you're talking about, and that's a good good comp. That's, That's better than my comp, honestly. It's like an it's like a remake of an Icelandic film. It's about a, a like an ex smuggler who's tried to settle down with his family, and then his crazy brother, played by Ben Foster, who always plays the crazy brother, pulls a job. It goes wrong, and then Mark Wahlberg's asked to like go back into the game and like save his brother. So it's like gone in sixty seconds, but they're on boats and they're on like docks, which is pretty cool. Ben Foster has made such a good living playing the crazy brother. The crazy brother who like gets himself in a jam. Oh. I love, man, love a good Ben Froster, crazy brother. No, that's a real good comp. My comp was, and this one isn't even that good. I don't know why I so. Did you see The Lookout with Joseph Gordon-Levitt? It's I like did. A heist I love movie. that movie. I really that's like really it. a really good movie. I really <laughs> like it. It was honestly probably better than The Takeover, but it also is super overlooked, and I don't feel like a lot of people saw it, so that's what I thought of this. It's kind of like an action movie um, with a known guy. Gord- it was this was it was kind of when Just Gordon Lett was transitioning out of child actor phase and getting into like adult movie, but it's like a, it's a good movie. It's a good action movie. It's a like if, if that's ever on TV, like throw it on. But, oh, 100%. Uh, yeah, so it was honestly probably better than The Takeover because, like, Joseph Gordon-Levitt is fucking sweet and Vincent Chase is. Isn't he, like, disabled in that movie? Yeah, well, he uh, he plays, like, a like a former athlete, like a hockey player or something who had an accident, and so he can't play, and, like, he's a security guard. And so these people are like, we're going to rob your bank. You're part of yep. our squad now. And you're going to help me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the movie's actually really good. Here's what I'm going to do, everyone. So you don't have to keep hearing me and Tyler say you got to see that movie. Go to the show notes of today's episode. I'm going to make a list of all the movies that we've like compared these to. And it's going to be basically 10 movies that me and Kyle, Kyle the host of a very successful sports movie podcast, and me the host of a mildly successful Entourage podcast, 
recommend you watching. So maybe take the weekend, download some of these on iTunes, or uh, try to catch them on Netflix because we think we have good taste in movies. But judge for yourself. And then I'm going to call every single one of you and ask you if you watch the movies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I didn't want to talk about it. I w- okay. Yes, I wanted I did. to leave. I did want to talk about it. The movie that Vinny is trying to get off the ground in the Entourage movie in 2014 out. And that movie is called Hyde. I emailed you. I said, we're not talking about Hyde. You were like, please, can we talk about Hyde? Kyle, talk about Hyde. Jared, I'll tell you what. I'm the captain. <laughs> I'm asking. I'm asking the questions because I I want to know. So first and foremost, would you see Hyde on opening night? So, uh, first you, off, and you've let's seen talk about the trailer. The... Do you want to talk about the trailer? So the, yeah, I've seen. Everyone saw the trailer in the Entourage movie, and like apparently he's a DJ who also is a superhero or like a super villain or something. Well, he he's Doctor Jekyll. It's a modern Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Okay, but he's a DJ, <laughs> which like. Okay, you had me, you really have me at modern Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Like, that yeah, sounds same. pretty cool. Same, I agree. You kind of lose me at he's a DJ. Yeah. Because, like, I don't want to see, like, I mean, like, Calvin Harris is in the trailer. It kind of loses me. Like, you know what Dr. Jekyll is? He's a doctor. So that's kind of what I needed from that. I needed him to be a doctor. And that would have been great. Vinny yeah, Chase, like, as a doctor? Yeah, I could buy that. Him is like this DJ and like this, let's bring the trailer in. Sadly, all good parties must come to an end. weird rave party and the cops show up and there's a lot of neon lights and he's like got weird eyes and then calvin harris shows up and he's like holding a box with like the i don't know it is one of the worst trailers i've ever seen in my life and i cannot believe that when they wrote the entourage movie they were like this is our linchpin like vince is gonna do this this movie's gonna win drama and oscar i feel like it's not hard to make a cool fake trailer i feel like it wouldn't have been hard at all they were just like let's pick anything and it's going to be cool. And they went with that, and it astounds me. And don't forget, Vinny directed this movie. Yeah, that, oh, that's the best part. That's the <laughs> best part. And like he insists, he's like, uh, Ari, I love this movie, but I want to direct it. Like I want to star in it, but I want to direct it. Like you don't like you don't see that when when someone's doing their when, it, when it's like an actor doing their first the first movie they're directing like it's something a little smaller or it's really in their wheelhouse like olivia wilde just directed book smart which was kind of like the the yep. female super bad but it's like sure. a smaller scale movie it's a comedy she's been in movies like that like it sounds good vince is just like yeah first movie i'm gonna direct modern dr jekyll and mr hyde but he's a dj let's go <laughs> let's do this <laughs> He was $15 million over budget during the plot of the Entourage movie. He needed to ask Ari for $10 million more. That's the driving tension of the Entourage movie is he needs $10 million more million on top of the fifteen that uh, Ari already gave him. Um, was he a good fit or a bad pick? I can't wait for you to talk about the Entourage movie. I Honestly, it's a bad pick, but like... In the movie, Johnny Drama wins an Oscar, and like that almost never happens on a bad movie. He wins a Golden Globe for Best yeah, Supporting yeah, Actor, but yes, yeah. close enough. Gold, same thing. <laughs> Opening night, stream it, watch it on table, or skip it. So if the movie was getting buzz, and people were like, oh, yeah. Johnny you know, Johnny Chase is going to get nominated for this, and like people were saying it was good, I would skeptically walk into the theater. I would pay my money. Okay, okay interesting. Okay, Vincent Chase, show me. Come back from this trailer. Show show me what you got. That's like, fair. I, I would be intrigued because it, it is a really cool concept. Like aside from the DJ thing, <laughs> but it just DJ. I don't know. It's like they wanted okay. Like Vince's this movie has to be real cool for the Entourage movie. Like this movie, and they're like, again, I keep saying like, what if it's Doctor Jekyll, modern day Doctor Jekyll, but he's a DJ. Like it sounds like something like that. <laughs> Ari, what's what's the scene when Ari tells the woman like, get out. When he like she yeah. says Vince like tell, says Vince is gonna do TV. That seems yep. like one of the ideas that Ari would have been like, no, get out, get out of the conference room. Don't even grab a bagel. Exactly. What was the comp for Hyde? I I didn't have a comp for Hyde. I honestly could not think. I was like, I don't know what this is. I'm gonna float one by you. What do you got? Here here's what I got. It's not a perfect fit, but there's there's like a, a a feature of this that might work. 
The most recent Mummy movie in 2017 that starred Tom Cruise. Oh my god. In the movie becomes the mummy and is like half human, half mummy. And it was a massive box office disaster. So I don't think that aligns very well with Hyde, but I think the concept of like this established actor trying something new, trying something out of their wheelhouse a little bit, and then being this like two faced monster type thing, I think that kind of works here. I think, yeah, I think that lines up really well. Oh my God, I can't believe they made that. I have no idea why that happened. <laughs> So we just talked about the movies that Vinny Chase has done so far in his career. I'm saying that as if he's still alive out there acting somewhere. And in my heart, I'd like to think that he is. I'd like to think that the boys are still living together somewhere and Vinny's still making movies. He's, he's probably just doing more Mentos commercials and living <laughs> off Turtle. <laughs> That's true. Tr- Turtle is a billionaire by the end of the show, inexplicably. Um, <sighs> Unbelievable. Let's talk about the movies Vince passes on. There's a pretty long list of these. There's a lot of movies that he, like, almost mates, don't get made. He starts mating, and then it doesn't uh, go into production. Uh, the first is Matterhorn. He's offered the role of Matterhorn right after Head On, but he passes. Colin Farrell ends up taking it, and uh, it never makes it into production. So it doesn't look like he ever makes Matterhorn. Matterhorn never sees the light of day. Even Josh Weinstein said that script was a piece of shit. <laughs> if Josh Weinstein says that. Call Josh Weinfuck, the lightweight pen-stealing fuckface. I think I think the most promising of his early roles that he passes on or that he's unable to make is the Joey Ramones project. I want to be sedated. I think that was something that he could like he could have fit in cuz you could see Vince kind of has that like floppy Ramones style hair. You could see him growing yeah. on that. He's from Queens. Like when you get a, a past that episode being like Martin Landau playing what what is what was his character's name? Bob Ryan. Like Bob Ryan. Would that be something that you're interested in or whatever? <laughs> um, when you get past that, I think that's the most appealing because that's also like a movie I would want to see. Like I feel like 100%. Vince could fit and I would want to see the movie. And it's Ari kind of mismanaging the relationship between Bob Ryan and the studio that ultimately leads to Vince firing Ari for almost an entire season. So that was like the biggest letdown, in my opinion, of the movies that I wanted to see Vince star in. Mm-hmm. I agree. I I, th- I think that was the only one that I would have liked to have been like, yeah, let's get some of that on screen. I think that would have been a really cool thing. It would have been cool to see, like in retrospect, Vince filming a musical biopic. Yeah. But then there are movies that I'm pretty happy that Vince didn't star in, like Glimpses of the Moon, an Edith Wharton novel that was going to be directed by Sam Mendes. Vinny's uh, new agent, Amanda Daniels, was trying to pressure him to do that. And, uh, Nah, not not for me. Not not one of those. I'm not a Pride and Prejudice guy. I'm not like a guy who wants to sit there and watch, you know, a slow period romantic piece. What about you? I mean, I consider myself like a pretty decent Entourage fan. I've watched the series multiple times, and I didn't remember the glimpses of the moon until you <laughs> sent me this run sheet. So that's how I feel about glimpses of the moon. Exactly. That's all that needs to be said. After Medean's completed and it's been submitted to Khan or Can, whatever they call it, and they're just waiting for their next project, Vince E. and Billy Walsh, the Medean dream team, are offered an adaptation of the novel Lost in the Clouds, which is like a movie about a stranded hiker, I think. And Walsh takes the script and completely reworks it into a post-apocalyptic film set in the year 2075 called Silo. Which I kind of love. I love that move that Walsh is like, "Here's this great book, but I'm gonna fuck, I'm gonna go nuts and change everything." Oh yeah! At the time, you're like, "Really? We did another season of Walsh with these guys?" Is Walsh had kind of worn on everyone at that point? But uh, mm-hmm. would you have seen either of these? I mean, maybe like I, Silo would have been like a trash movie that I would have thrown on on Netflix. Like if I need something to maybe not go to sleep to, but if I just need something to kill time, like I might, I might watch that. I, I'm into, I'm into some of those like post-apocalypse movies, but neither totally. of them I'm going to the theater to see. I completely agree with you. And after Medean gets savaged by reviewers, goes directly to DVD, Vinny's on a beach in Mexico for a couple months. He gets brought back to have a meeting for a project Carl Ertz is producing called Danger Beach. It's a mid-budget genre film. This is good news for Vinny because it's one of those like easy ways for him to get back in the industry to like get his face in front of a bunch of teenage girls again and, and remember and have them remember why they loved him. I think I would have been a fan of Danger Beach, to be honest with you. I think I would have definitely seen Danger Beach. It sounds I, like it Danger Beach gives me uh like roadhouse vibes. Yep. Just like Danger Beach. It's also one that I would have taken like a an early twenties girlfriend to see like on a Friday, like, hey, let's go get some dinner and go see that Danger Beach movie. I've heard it's like kind of fruity and like 
it's one of those PG thirteen like horror movies, you know. Mm-hmm. Nothing's really actually gonna like stare you. It's just gonna be a bunch of jumps. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Nine Brave Souls. It's adapted into a movie with Edward Norton and Jason Patrick with Vinny as like the second lead in it. It's newly titled as Smoke Jumpers. All sorts of problems with the director. I don't know, dude. Like we kind of see in this moment, it's midway through season six that Vinny has some trouble with, like, serious dramatic roles. Mm-hmm. Okay, action! I gotta talk to my wife, Wilson. I'm not gonna make it. Vincent! Can you call my wife? Tell her I love... I need more passion. I, there should be fear and panic. You think this is it? And the girl you're calling, that's your childhood love. There should be sorrow, remorse, sadness. Action! Wilson, I don't think I'm gonna make it, man. Can you call my wife? Tell her I love her! I don't see it! Uh. I can't see it! <laughs> <laughs> that one when he's like stuck in the thing. This movie, it, it kind of reminds me, there was a, the Miles Teller movie that just came out recently. like Only the, the Brave. Only the, yeah, the, that one. Um, so it's kind of like that, but yeah, I don't see, especially like putting Vince up against Edward Norton is like cruel and unusual punishment. Seriously. Because Edward Norton is, one, an amazing actor, and two, a complete psychopath. Like, I don't think Vince would vibe with Edward Norton at all. I don't think Edward Norton would vibe with, like, turtle and drama hanging around on set, like, smoking pot and drinking creatine shakes. <laughs> oh, drama would try to chat up Edward Norton so much. Like, remember when we were backstage at, the, like, at some shitty party in, like, the 90s or something? <laughs> and Edward Norton would just be like, I'm focused on my role, John. Edward Norton. Yeah, Edward Norton would be in character. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember John, and I've grown since then. Yes. And then the very last movie that he doesn't do, and what's funny is this is midway through season five that is like the last movie he passes on. Season six, seven, eight, Vinny's just like pedal to the metal, just like taking movies and doing them. They don't, he doesn't have any like misses or passes for the last three seasons of the show. So the last movie he decides not to do is Benji. 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 Hey, say it. Benji. Benji. No, no, like this. Benji. Benji. I mean, that's a good call. That's a He good was going call. to play alongside a dog, and he was going to pay $3 million for it. He almost did it because he was nearly bankrupt at the time. Yeah, I, I still think it's a good call not doing Benji. I respect Vince for that. But at the same time, like you said, he kind of starts taking every movie he can get after this. Like he, like you can see a scenario where in like 2020, like where we are now, Vince is kind of like Nick Cage, and he's just like, yeah, paycheck, 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 paycheck. Yep. Give me, give it all to me. Yeah, 100. percent So I'm glad he missed it too. Like, why not at this point? You know, he's a, as bit of a movie star as it can be, and um. Yeah, so that is the career of Vinny Chase. We've talked about his good movies. We've talked about his bad movies. We've talked about the movies that he starred in. We've talked about the movies that he missed out on. Before we go, I have one question for you, Crash, and that is an important one, an important one that comes up pretty often on this podcast with our different guests every week. Hit me with it. Was Vinny Chase a good actor? Uh, <laughs> um, Vinny Chase... I just want to say, like, he had his moments. Vinny Chase was not a bad actor. He would have been one of these things. So if we're going back and we're, like, doing a, you know, this is real life and we're talking about this and we're just talking about, like, Vince, he's just gotten cast in a new movie and we're kind of talking about it. We would say, oh, well, you know, he's obviously he's really good in Queens Boulevard. And, yep. uh, you know, I really liked him in Gatsby. He could he, he made that role work, you know, as a, as a supporting guy. He's really good. Like, Ferrari was, eh, but... Yeah. So he, he's kind of one of those guys. Like, Vince in the right role can do the job. Do you think Vince Chase ever wins an, an award for acting? An Emmy, a Golden Globe, or an Oscar? I could see him catching a nom for, like, a Golden Globe or something as a supporting actor in, like, a drama later in his career. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I could see that being the pinnacle for him. One-time Golden Globe-nominated actor Vinny Chase. Yeah, or like an Emmy for best, like an Emmy nom for like best guest appearance in like a miniseries or something yeah. like that. Like one of maybe those, yes, one of those yeah, he's playing ones. at like a lower weight class. He's with a bunch of TV actors, and he just gets the opportunity to like 
give a good monologue and he catches that Emmy nom. Like, I kind of completely agree with you, and that's not just for the sake of agreeing with you. I, I think he had his moments, and I don't think anyone would go like, oh, Vince Chase, he's a, he's a bad actor. I just think that he... He was a movie star. He did the job well. He starred in like the biggest action movie or the biggest superhero movie of all time. And he also made some good indie projects. He was famous enough. Like he, he had a satisfactory career. Yeah, he, he starred in one of the biggest flops of all time, but he also starred in one of the biggest movies of all time. So that kind of evens itself out. Yeah, I agree. I think, um, yeah, he, he Vince had a respectable career. Vince had, an, had a career where he could take care of his four friends. Like if Turtle wasn't a uh, didn't become a billionaire, Vince would have had a good enough career where they're all okay. Series creator Dud Ellen has mentioned that the character of Vince has touches of Tobey Maguire in terms of its storyline, Leonardo DiCaprio in terms of his personality, and Mark Wahlberg in terms of his lifestyle. And I think that's pretty dead on. I agree. I agree. I, I mean, Tobey Maguire is, is a little bit of a... That's, that's in terms of the storyline. Storyline, yes. Yeah, storyline, yes. Acting prowess, I don't... Although... I don't think he could have done Tobey Maguire's work in, uh, what was that movie, Brothers, that movie with Jake Gyllenhaal, but yeah, that was I, a good I could one. see it. Yeah, that was a good one. You should probably see that if you have it. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone here should probably listen to Tyle's podcast, Bid Screen Sports. Tyle, where can the listeners of Oh Yeah, Oh Yeah follow you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Kyle Banduho. That's B A N D U J O. Uh, follow the podcast on Twitter at Big underscore Screen Sport. Instagram at Big Screen Sports Pod. Uh, on Thursday, check out our episode on Cool Runnings. JR, thank you so much for having me, man. I had a blast. Me too, dude. We'll have you back sometime soon. I like doing this special episode with you because it, it let you flex your, your movie prowess and uh, your, uh, your analyst muscles. So uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun, and uh, I'll see you soon. See you soon, man. Thanks. Later. Later.